Rescuers dug with their bare hands and bodies piled up in Nepal on Sunday after an earthquake devastated the heavily crowded Kathmandu Valley, killing more than 2,200 people, and triggered a deadly avalanche on Mount Everest. A big aftershock between Kathmandu and Everest unleashed more avalanches in the Himalayas. In the capital, hospital workers stretchered patients out onto the street to treat them as it was too dangerous to keep them indoors. Another one, we have an aftershock right now. Oh shit! Said Indian climber Arjun Vajpai over the phone from Mukalu Base Camp near Everest. Avalanche, he shouted. Screams and the roar of crashing snow could be heard over the line as he spoke. The tremor, measured at 6.7, was the most powerful since Saturday's 7.9 quake itself the strongest since Nepal's worst earthquake disaster of 1934 that killed 8,500 people. The aftershock rocked buildings in the Indian capital New Delhi and halted the city metro. There is no way one can forecast the intensity of aftershocks so people need to be alert for the next few days, said L.S. Rathor, chief of India's state-run weather office. In Everest's worst disaster, the bodies of 17 climbers were recovered from the mountain on Sunday after being caught in avalanches. A plane carrying the first 15 injured climbers landed in Kathmandu at around noon local time. There is a lot of confusion on the mountain. The toll will rise, said Jalo Sherpa, one of the walking wounded among the first 15 injured climbers flown to Kathmandu. Tents have been blown away, said Sherpa, his head in bandages. Government overwhelmed. With Nepal's government overwhelmed by the scale of the disaster, India flew in medical supplies and relief crews, while China sent in a 60-strong emergency team. Relief agencies said hospitals in the Kathmandu Valley were overflowing and running out of medical supplies. Army officer Santosh Nepal and a group of rescuers worked all night to open a passage into a collapsed building in Kathmandu. They had to use pickaxes because bulldozers could not get through the ancient city's narrow streets. We believe there are still people trapped inside, he told Reuters pointing at concrete debris and twisted reinforcement rods where a three-story residential building once stood. Among the capital's landmarks destroyed in the earthquake was the 60-meter, 200-foot, Dhurahara Tower, built in 1832 for the Queen of Nepal, with a viewing balcony that had been open to visitors for the last ten years. A jagged stump was all that was left of the lighthouse-like structure. As bodies were pulled from the ruins on Saturday, a policeman said up to 200 people had been trapped inside. Bodies were still arriving on Sunday at one hospital in Kathmandu, where police officer Sudan Shreshtha said his team had brought 166 corpses overnight. I am tired and exhausted, but I have to work and have the strength, Shreshtha told Reuters as an ambulance brought three more victims to the Tribhuvan University Teaching Hospital. Bodies were heaped in a dark room, some covered with cloth, some not. A boy aged about seven had his face half missing and his stomach bloated like a football. The stench of death was overpowering. Outside, a thirty-year-old woman who had been widowed wailed, Oh Lord, oh God, why did you take him alone? Take me along with him also. Both private and government hospitals have run out of space and are treating patients outside, in the open, said Nepal's envoy to India, Deep Kumar Upadhyay. Prime Minister Sushil Koirala is back from abroad and will soon address the country. Save the children's Peter Olil said hospitals in the Kathmandu Valley were running out of storage room for bodies and emergency supplies. There is a need for a government decision on bringing in kits from the military, he said from Kathmandu. Some buildings in Kathmandu toppled like houses of cards, others leaned at precarious angles and partial collapses exposed living rooms and furniture in place and belongings stacked on shelves. Rescuers, some wearing face masks to keep out the dust, scrambled over mounds of splintered timber and broken bricks in the hope of finding survivors. Some used their bare hands to fill small white buckets with dirt and rock. Thousands of people spent the night outside in chilly temperatures and patchy rain, too afraid to return to their damaged homes. On Sunday, Survivors wandered the streets clutching bed rolls and blankets, while others sat in the street cradling their children, surrounded by a few plastic bags of belongings. 
The 7.9 magnitude quake struck at midday on Saturday at a busy time of year for the tourism-reliant country's trekking and climbing season, with an estimated 300,000 foreign tourists in the country, home to many World Heritage sites. Police put the death toll in Nepal at 2,152, with 5,463 hurt. At least 700 were killed in the capital, a city of about 1 million people where many homes are old, poorly built and packed close together. Some 49 people were reported killed in neighboring India, which has sent military aircraft to Nepal with medical equipment and relief teams. It also said it had dispatched 285 members of its National Disaster Response Force. In Tibet, the death toll climbed to 17, according to a tweet from China's state news agency, Xinhua. Four people were killed in Bangladesh. Pakistan's military is sending four C-130 aircraft with a 30-bed hospital, search and rescue teams and relief supplies, the army said. There were nearly 1,000 climbers and Sherpas on Everest when the first avalanche struck, claiming the highest toll of any disaster on the world's highest mountain. Climber photographs on social media sites showed tents and other structures at Everest base camp flattened by rocks and snow. The first reported photo of the avalanche showed a monster cloud-like mass of snow and rock descending down the mountain. Helicopters were able to fly in on Sunday morning as clouds lifted to evacuate the injured to a lower altitude, from where they were being flown to Kathmandu. All badly injured heli evacuated, Romanian climber Alex Gavin tweeted from base camp. Caring for those needing. Want sleep. Another 100 climbers higher up Everest at camps 1 and 2, were safe but their way back down the mountain was blocked by damage to the treacherous Kumbu Ice Falls scene of an avalanche that killed 16 climbers last year. Helicopters had started to shuttle them to base camp, Gavin reported. The main earthquake, centered 50 miles, 80 kilometers, east of the second city, Pakhara, was all the more destructive for being shallow. The first group of survivors from an earthquake-triggered avalanche that swept through the Mount Everest base camp were flown to Nepal's capital on Sunday and taken to hospitals. None appeared to have life-threatening injuries. At least 17 people were killed when Saturday's avalanche, set off by the massive earthquake that struck Nepal, obliterated part of the rocky village of Nylon Tents, where dozens of teams were training and acclimatizing themselves to higher altitudes as they prepared to make summit attempts in the next few weeks. 22 of the most seriously injured had already been taken by helicopter for treatment in the village of Farish the location of the nearest medical facility. But bad weather and communications were hampering more helicopter flights, said Ang Chering of the Nepal Mountaineering Association. Later Sunday, a plane carrying 15 injured people arrived in the capital, Kathmandu, from Lukla, home of the closest airport to Mount Everest. Officials refused to provide details on their conditions, but most appeared to have broken bones or other treatable injuries. Of those evacuated, 12 were Nepalese Sherpas. There was also one person each from China, South Korea, and Japan. The Sherpa survivors said they feared that many more people could be dead on Everest. Pemba Sherpa, a 43-year-old guide with the right side of his face bandaged, was surprised he had survived. He rushed from his tent when the earthquake hit Saturday and was standing in the open when I heard a big noise, and the next thing I know I was swept away by the snow he said. I must have been swept almost 200 meters, yards, dot. Later, he regained consciousness. I was in a tent surrounded by some foreigners. I did not know what happened or where I was, he said after being taken to Kathmandu Medical College Hospital. For generations, thousands of ethnic Sherpas, many of whom also use Sherpa as a surname, have made their livings working on mountaineering expeditions as guides porters or cooks. Saturday's magnitude 7.8 quake struck at around noon, just over a year after the deadliest avalanche on record hit Everest, killing 16 Sherpa guides on April 18, 2014. Witnesses said the avalanche began on Mount Kumarai, a 7,000 meter, 22,966 foot, high mountain just a few kilometers, miles, from Everest gathering strength as it headed toward base camp and the lower reaches of Everest. 
numerous climbers may now be cut off on routes leading to the top of the world's highest peak. Pim Bahadur Katri, 35, another survivor flown to Kathmandu, said he was cooking in a meal tent when the quake struck. We all rushed out to the open and the next moment a huge wall of snow just piled on me, he said in a brief airport interview before being driven to a nearby hospital. I managed to dig out of what could easily have been my grave. I wiggled and used my hands as claws to dig as much as I could. I was suffocating, I could not breathe. But I knew I had to survive. When he finally dug his way out, gulping in fresh air, he was surrounded by devastation. Part of the base camp village was gone. I looked around and saw the tents all torn and crushed. Many people were injured, he said. I had lived but lost many of my friends.